Okay, the final video for this chapter will be on proportion. So let's have a look at the last part. Let's look at your learning outcome for proportion. Uh, you need to determine whether pr the proportion is true or false by using cross multiply. When you cross uh, multiply, you've done it in chapter two. Find the un unknown number in a proportion. You've also done it a little bit in chapter two. And solve application problems, all right? So let's do a proportion. A proportion states that two ratio or rates are equivalent. So like this, $20 is for four hours is the same as $40 for eight hours. All right. Fraction is a proportion, meaning when you write it in fraction, it, when it's equal, it is a proportion. Okay. If two pounds of fertilizer will cover 50 square feet of garden, how many pounds are needed for 225 square feet? So you have done a little bit of this in chapter 2. So this shouldn't be a problem. You cross multiply and you find the answer. Okay, the proportion, the proportion that you're going to use is pounds over square feet. All right, so 2 out of 50 equals to, you don't know, you can use x, you can use any unknown you want, over 2 to 5. Then you solve it to find the unknown. All right. Um, actually, the other shorter way to do it is um, what you want to find, you put on top. Divide with the same unit times the opposite. So what you want to find is actually 2 to 5, right? So you take 2 to 5, you divide 50 and times 2. So you can do it either way that you like. The, this way is by cross multiplying, the one that you see in the slide. The other way is whatever it is that you want to find. Like in this question, you want to find 2 to 5. 2 to 5 goes on top. Divide by 50. Why do you divide by 50? You must divide with the same unit. You need to cross off the units basically. So 2 to 5 divide 50 times 2. All right. Example 2. It's 1 to 75 miles. Lake Superior is 4.75 inches long on the map. So let's look at the proportion you're going to use uh, inches above miles. So it is 1 over 75 divided with 4.75 over you don't know, which is X. So you can cross multiply and find. Cross multiplying, I don't think it should be a problem. You've done it in chapter 2 already. But uh, if you're using the other shorter way that I was mentioning earlier, what you want to find will go on top. So what you want to find is 4.75 inches, right? So 4.75 inches, you will divide 1. Inch divide inch times 75. You will get the same answer. So if you use my method, you don't really need to show any working. You can just put it in the calculator and get the answer. But it's up to you. If you can accept it, no problem. You can go ahead. Cough syrup is to be given at the rate of 30 ml for each 100 pounds of body weight. How much should be given to a 34 pound child? So 30 is 100 pounds. You don't know is 34 pounds. So we're going to use ml over pounds. Um, we're just using ml over pounds because the question gives ml first, then, then pounds. All right. You can use it either way. All right. So 30 over 100 because 30 is 400 equals to you don't know for 34. All right. So you cross multiply, you can get the answer. So if you use my method, what you want to find is for a 34 pound child, right? So 34, you divide 100. Why? Because pound divide pound. What you want to find goes on top. Divide the one with the same unit times 30. You will get the answer. All right, there are two types of proportion. One is direct. What we have been doing just now is direct proportion. When one increase, the other one will increase. That is direct proportion. You understand what we did just now? You see, like 20% of the investment is $80. What is the total value of the investment? So if 20% is $80, obviously 100% is a lot more, right? So when one increase, the other one increase. This is direct proportion. When one de decrease, the other one will decrease. So now when you read the question, you need to identify which is direct proportion, which is inverse proportion. All right. So direct proportion, always remember one increase, the other one increase. Inverse proportion, it means whatever it means. It is opposite of each other. One increase, the other one will decrease. And this, the question won't tell you. You have to identify this yourself. So if you look on the bottom, if it takes three people to complete the work in four days, how long will it take six people? So you need to think before you even do. This is a common mistake within students. They always just cross multiply and find the answer. You must always think, if one increase, what will happen? The other one will increase or decrease. Will it move the same direction? So three people takes four days. Now, six people are doing the job. There are more people doing the job. The number of days should reduce, right? 
That means the number of people increase in doing the job, the time taken to finish it will reduce. So this is inverse proportion, all right? So if it is inverse proportion, you're going to use the formula that you see there. Y1, X1 equals to Y2, X2. So if you look at my formula, I'm just following the question. If it takes three people to complete the work in four days, so three people times four days, meaning Y1 times X1, you understand? Three people times four days is equivalent to six people times you don't know. So the six people is Y2 and the you don't know is X2. So three times four equals to six times X2. So 12 equals to 6x2 because it's y1, x1. That means the first two, uh, the first two uh, variables times the second two variables. So it's 12 equals to 6x squared. Then you just solve it to find x squared, you will get two days. So remember, in your question, they will never tell you it's direct or proportion. It's up to you to think. If one increase, the other one increase, direct. If one decrease, the other one also decrease. Both moving same direction is direct. But if they move in opposite direction where one increase, the other one decrease, then you know it is inverse. All right? So let's look at exercise 3.3. I'll just go through a few questions because they are pretty much similar. They are all just cross multiplication questions. All right, Carolyn can sketch four cartoon strips in five hours. How long will it take her to sketch 18? So you can cross multiply or can use the method that I was teaching you just now. How long will it take her to sketch 18 strips? What do you want to find? 18 strips, right? So 18 goes on top, divide 4 times 5, you can find the answer. Or you can use the traditional cross multiplication. 16 newspapers cost 27, find the cost of 16. So you want to use my method, what you want to find is 16, right? 16 divide 60 times 27, you will get the answer. So same goes to the rest where you will be basically um, just cross multiplying or you want to use my method, it's totally up to you, alright? And question number 9, you have to do it twice. Why you have to do it twice? One is for doing calories and one is for grams, meaning you'll cross multiply twice. You cannot find the answer one shot. Okay, the nutrition says one third cup serving produce 80 calories. Half a cup, how much? So you find calories first, then you will do another working for dietary fiber. All right, cross multiplication of my method is up to you. You should be able to get the answer. So these are the solutions. All right, let's look at exercise uh, 3.4, I believe. So this is also the same, uh, the first few, the first three are very easy. They're just ratio questions. Okay, after that is you give the rate per minute, uh, rate in pages per minute. So pages per minute means one minute, how many pages? All right, so you take four divided by 20. Okay, so you can know one minute, how many? Whereas the other one is minutes per pages. So you want to know, one page how many minutes so you take 20 divide by 4 understand okay the you just follow the question pages per minute you take pages divide minute minutes per pages you take minute divide pages okay so same thing like number five dollar per hour you take a dollar divide hour 24 divide 3 hours per dollar you take the hours divide dollar understand Okay, so 6 and 7 is best buy. I've already mentioned in my previous video. Always take monetary value, divide quantity. Meaning 2.29, divide 13. 1.45, divide 8. 0 0.95, divide 3. And then you find which is the cheapest option. Same goes to number 7. Always money. Money is always on top. Divide with quantity. All right. So number 8 and 9 are just uh, simple ratio questions and rate questions, so it shouldn't be a problem. Same goes to 10 to 19, actually quite direct, shouldn't be a problem. I will be going through question 23 to 36. Why? Because these are inverse proportion questions, all right? Okay, let's look at 23. How do we know it's inverse? 23 workers build a wall in 12 hours. How long would it have taken 6 hours? equally productive workers to build the wall. Now, I've put in 24 there as an answer because this was a slide to check whether you, are you getting it right because it's the first question students will never think. Always think. Three workers take 12 hours. Now there are six workers. If there are more people doing the job, it should be faster. All right, so this is inverse proportion. You got to use inverse proportion formula and answer x1, y1, meaning 12 times 3 equals to 6 times you don't know. Okay, so the answer will be 6 hours. Same goes to number 24. 
It takes 14 hours for a faucet to, with a flow of 18 liters per minute. How long will it take if it's reduced to seven? Now, if the number of liters of water reduce, one reduce, what will happen to the time taken to fill up? It will increase. One up, one down. This is inverse. So you will use inverse proportion formula to answer the question. Number 25, a farmer has enough cattle feed to feed 300 hens for 20 days. If he buys 100 more hens, meaning now the number of chickens are increasing, the time taken for the food to finish should reduce, right? So this is inverse. So you use inverse formula, okay? Four taps fill in two hours. Eight taps, more taps. That means the number of taps increase, the time will decrease. So inverse. If there are six builders, it takes 80 days. How many builders must be employed to build the house in just 16 days? So again, you will use your inverse proportion formula and find the answer. All right, you want, if the time taken for the days decrease, meaning you need more people, the builders must increase. So one up, one down. Eight men can do a certain job in 12 days. How many men will be required to do the same job in 16 days? If the number of days increase, the number of men will reduce, right? So inverse proportion. Now, if you travel at 40 kilometers an hour, it takes 10 hours. But if you travel faster, meaning the, the kilometers per hour increase, the time taken will decrease, inverse proportion. An army has provisions for 240 men in 28 days. How long will the provision last if only 112 men are sent to the camp? If number of men reduce, the number of days will increase, right? Inverse proportion. So same goes to the rest. I want you to read and think. One increase, one decrease. What kind of proportion is this? Inverse or direct? If inverse, you use inverse proportion formula. Direct, you cross multiply or you can use the method I have gone through, all right? This is your solution. Okay, pass your question number one. Leon sold a computer and the original software for a total of 2,100. The buyer found that Leon had charged four times as much for his computer as he did for his software. What I told you about ratio, what he said first on the left, what he said second on the right. So computer to software, computer is four times, software is one time. So the total number of parts is five parts, right? So how much is the computer? 4 out of 5 times 2,100. How much is the software? 1 over 5 times 2,100. Okay, shouldn't be a problem. Next one, this is a little bit more complicated. Mr. Dunn has expired and left his wealth amounting to 234,000 to be distributed among three children according to their age ratios. All his sons are between 20 to 30 years old. His eldest and youngest are prime numbers. What are prime numbers? So between 20 to 30, how many, what prime numbers do you have? 20 is not a prime number. It's a number that can be divided by one and itself. 20 is not, 21 is not, 20, 23 is, right? So we're going to go through it one by one. So you go through from 20 to 29. What prime numbers do you have? Okay, the total of all three sons' age is 78. So there's only one way to determine this now. You can analyze the whole question. So when it comes to long questions, the best way is to write down one by one. So the first part, total wealth is 234,000. He has three children's ages, which you don't know. We call it XYZ. But you know when you add XYZ up, it will be 78, right? X is the youngest. Z is the oldest. X and Z are prime numbers between 20 and 30. So, one is youngest, one is oldest, right? So, what is the smallest prime number that you have from 20 to 30? 23, right? What's the biggest prime number that you have from 20 to 30? 29. So, you can go through one by one and you will see 23 and 29 are the only two prime numbers, smallest and biggest. All right? So, then, if you already got two sons age, you can get the other sons age, right? 23 plus 29 plus you don't know equals to 78. You should be able to solve it for the unknown which is 26. So then you write down the ratio one by one, 23 to 26 to 29. So the first one is 23 over 78. Second one is 26. Why 78? Because total is 78. Then the last one is 29 over 78. So you will take the fractions of each and multiply it with the total wealth and you will get the ratio of each. All right, so do it one by one. The questions are long and complicated. Write down one by one. It will seem a lot more understandable. Now let's analyze this question. He owns an advertising company, has received an order for a billboard and the customer has given him a miniature, that means a small model, which is 3.5 times 7.5. Okay, 
So you write it down as a ratio. The first one is 3.5 by 7.5. The regulation, however, say cannot exceed 5.4 meter in length. Okay, so in length is always the longer part. So the longer part cannot exceed 5.4 meter. So now this is in meter, it's best that you change it into cm. So if you look at what I'm writing here, it's 540 to 300. You understand? It's 540 to 300. Why am I saying that? How do you know what's the maximum possible size? So first of all, when you make this 3.5 bigger and bigger and bigger, which one will reach 3.5 first? Of course, the length, right? So you take 540, you divide 13.5. You see how many times bigger can you make this board. So when you take 540 divide 13.5, you will realize that you can make this board 40 times bigger. You need to know how many times bigger can you make it. Because it will, how much bigger you make, you must stop at 540. That's the maximum size. So you want to know what's the biggest you can make. Alright, so you will take 540 cm divide 13.5 cm. Why? To know how many times bigger can you enlarge this thing. So you will realize that you can enlarge it only 40 times bigger. So if one you enlarge 40 times bigger, the other one also must enlarge 40 times bigger, right? So 7.5 times 40. So the biggest possible size will be by 5.4 meter by 3 meter. Alright? So if max charge 250 per square meter, the moment you see square meter, you got to find area. How to find area? 5.4 by 3. You times it, you'll get 16.2. Then you times with 250, you'll get 4050. The label on the medicine bottle indicates that 6 ounces of medicine must be mixed with 8 ounces of water. So you look at what I've written there. Medicine to water, 6 to 8. How much medicine and water must any mix? She must take 21 ounces in total. So see what I've done here. What's the total part? 14, right? So you take 6 out of 14 times 21 because you want to know how much of medicine. The next one, 8 out of 14. Times, why 8 out of 14? Because out of 14 parts, you times 21. So you will know out of the 21 ounces, how many must be water. Out of 21 ounces, how many must be medicine. So it's 9 to 12. All right? Okay, this one, you got to do it one by one. First of all, how many brown and how many beige tiles? So if we read the question carefully, you will see that he needs two different tiles. He needs three times as much brown as beige. So if you write it down as a ratio, brown to beige is three to one. Total number of parts is four parts. So if you want to know how many brown, three over four times 292, you'll get 291. One over four times 292, you'll get 73. Okay, use the price per box of tiles above and calculate the unique price of each tile based on the price which packaging of brown tiles seems to be the best buy. This is a lot of working that you need to do. Okay, why? First of all, you need to know how many boxes you need to buy. Now we're only talking about brown tiles, right? Okay, so we're only talking about brown tiles. We only want to know the brown tiles now. So you must see first, number of tiles in a box is six. So you need to actually count how many boxes you need to buy first. So now you've got 219 brown tiles, right? So for supplier A, 219, you divide with 6 first. You will get 36.5. You cannot buy 36.5 boxes. You've got to buy 37 boxes. You understand? This is how you have to do it one by one. For supplier B, 219, you divide by 12. You will get 18.25. You cannot buy 18.25. You've got to buy 19 boxes. Okay, let's look at supplier C. 219, you divide 24. You'll get 9.125. So from here, you cannot buy 9 boxes. Not enough. You've got to buy 10 boxes. So this is how you do it one by one. Then you take the price per box, meaning you take um, the number of boxes you buy times with the price, times with find the discounted price. Do it one by one. Then you divide with the total number of tiles that you've got to find the price for each tile. Understand? Don't just times with, divide with 219, huh? you got to divide with the total number of tiles. Like the first one, the, uh, it's six tiles in a box, right? So now you look at this. Uh, 219 divide. you got to buy 37 boxes, right? So you got to take 37 times 6. That means you're going to get 222 tiles. So you've got to take the total price after the discount, divide 222 and find the price per tile. Then you find the cheapest. Understand? This is a past year question. It's a little bit more difficult, but you can do it. Any questions, you can always ask me here. Huh?
Okay, this is just uh, the answer, the division for it. So we are done with chapter three. All right. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me.